Mr. Myers? Here. Ms. Delaney? Here. Mr. Zorn? Here. I'm here, Mr. Williams? Here. Okay. Um, I'm just going to say, too, for the record, I've never gotten an email about what committees we're serving on, so I don't think Ms. Lacanos knows that she's on finance. Okay. We've not been informed of what the committees are yet. Okay, and I didn't know because all I know is that... Um, I got it from Kim. Let me go have her... I got it from um, Blaine, probably one day last you know, week. You know, I remember Blaine so, asked, but I don't think I have already asked. We haven't received it. Okay, members so I apologize. Here it is. Yeah. I apologize because I didn't know that he didn't. I'll make a note for Kim to send yeah. off. He didn't let them know. All he did was give me a list of four names, so. And we've got Dave Myers, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm glad to see him back. Um, approval of the agenda? Motion. Okay. okay. There are no minutes to approve from the last one. They're not finished, picked up. Um, financial reports, we have October, November, and December. And those are just what they were at the ending of the month um, as we went through. Have we been given these yet? No, we haven't. So they're just for this, and then we can approve our next time. It's just your month, please? Yep, it's just a monthly report. Any real surprises? No. Um, much track and move, well, just because state aid doesn't start until October, so yeah, no. That's we always going to have that in balance. And, correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, but I mean, you got council, so they expected state aid is there. Right. Right. Ninety percent upfront, right? I get it. Ninety percent for the fall cut for the ten. Yeah. I guess maybe they changed it not too long ago. Right? They, well, they, keep, they keep attempting to change it, and then they go back and they decide, and so, yeah. Okay. So revenue and um, expenses are in line with what we expect? Yes. As of right now, yes. Motion to accept the report. Support. Um, we're going to go, there's several things on the list, but the first thing that we're going to do, Kim Curry is here to present her state and federal budget, um, that she will need to commit to the state for a revision for the 1617 Title I, um, Title IIA, and, is it those two? Title I and Title IIA, Correct. revision, that need to be submitted to the state. And did Kim give you the budget? No. Oh. Or just I yeah, she might have put them on the table. She didn't give them to me. I'll just throw them to you. Okay. So this is what we'd, we'd previously seen this in, I want to say Friday update, or was? It's been a Friday, I'm assuming that it's been a Friday update. I'm, I'm believing that you've previously seen it, yes. Yeah. It was, it was a while ago in December, right? It was um, in the Friday update prior to the organizational meeting, mm -hmm. but um, the new board members didn't have access to it, so it was taken off the agenda. Mm -hmm. right. And right. this is always a living document until we submit it. So uh, the one that was on there, a couple weeks ago may have changed from then, so that's why you're getting another new one. Because there's always updates that principals are making and things oh, until it's submitted and finally approved. Oh, okay. When is the actual due date to submit it to the... Well, there's two due dates. The first one that you have to, for the new school year, you have to submit it before July 1st. Right. And then the admit amendment needs to be submitted sometime in January. And this, it was actually... Um, due last Monday, but because of everything, we talked to the state and they said we could turn it in this week. They okay. knew that we needed to go to the board and throw it that. So okay. those the mid-year January deadline isn't always a firm deadline as the July 1st one. I've done it twice already today, and I've taken it apart. Just to do you have the right source of that button? I just tried it right before you got everybody got oh. here. Keep searching. Yeah. 
you want to try toggling your function key, or do you want to try a different laptop to make sure it's not? That should be good. I mean, if you're projecting, mm -hmm. just try toggling your uh, monitor function key. And is it normally like that four function on four or something yeah, like that? that Well, Tom, we'll better figure that out. I'll try to skip to the questions that we had from the board meeting. Tom, yeah, go is that all right? So, at the board meeting, um, there were three questions from the administrative review that you wanted some clarification on. Um, one was the caseloads per position for special education. And what we go by is the county sets up guidelines and this, along with the state. And so this is what our caseloads go by. Um, so I gave that sheet for you. The speech is 60 to 1 typically. Um, OTs are about 50 to 1. PTs are 45 to 1. And then depending on which classroom it is and how many pairs there are in the classroom constitutes the headcount for those classes. So all of our classrooms are in compliance with this? Yes. Last year, at the end of last year, Renee and I went through and made sure when we did uh, on some of the staffing cuts at the beginning of the year, we made sure that we were aligned with everything to go through it. Do all of our buildings have Act 18 programs? No, but we put the guidelines, um, we use the guidelines for all of special ed, not just the Act 18 programs. So the buildings, and I don't remember where the ASD is housed, the ASD program for Act 18, um, but we have Moody, Hoover, Truman, have for the POHI, and then I do not remember Act 18, where the ASG classrooms are. I believe it's Kenyon and West. I think you're right. Kenyon and West. Now that you say it, I just couldn't think of for ASD. And do you know which one? No. I'm sorry. The Act 18 is funds that we get from um, Washington, Wayne County, and they run our center programs. Our center <coughs> programs are the POHI program and the ASD program, which is the autistic program. So we get funded for those because we allow out of the county, out of our district students to go into that program okay. from okay. other districts. Um, because we don't run a hearing impaired and there's other special ed programs that other people run, <coughs> we send our students there, kind of a county program. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Is there a waiting factor for um, special ed kids who are taking mainstream courses, co-taught courses, or is this strictly talking about those that are in special ed? These, well, all of, I, I guess I'm not understanding. Are all special ed students mainstreamed, or are there some that are in um, categorical classrooms? Some are in categorical, right. they're not all mainstreamed. Right. And the, POHI, <coughs> only the POHI and the ASD are out of the center programs okay. with the Act 18 funds. And then we also receive funding from um, Wayne County for, they've changed it now, it's not Follow That Kid anymore, there's another name for it, and I forgot what the personalized individual aid, I think it is, yeah. but it's not, it used to be Follow the a a FTK aid. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah. used to be an FTK aid. This year they've changed the name to a personalized something or other. I still call it FTK aids, okay. but yeah. And that's funded through F18 as well. Okay? Two more questions and then we'll be done. Okay. The other part, the other questions that you had were the communication costs. And what I did is I printed out our communication costs mm -hmm. from the phones, and that's what the 570 were all the phone costs for 1415. I'm not sure why we have such a higher phone cost than other districts, and we definitely continue to have a higher phone cost, but I'm not sure why. So that's something that we need to research out with technology. Because it's not just <coughs> a little bit higher. No, it's, it's a lot higher. A lot higher, and this doesn't make sense. No, and I'm not sure why. I know at the beginning we had all those different 
the different phone costs um, with the towers and everything. Then we switched to Encore, but I'm not seeing a huge drop to compare to the other places. So I'm not sure how they're funding versus how we're funding or how why we're so much. Does this possibly include um, Wi-Fi hotspots from? TV no, this does not. So these are these are VoIP lines or POTS lines or DSL or, or okay. DS1. So it could be cable billing. Yeah. The, and that's district wide. Yeah. So 15 billing, 16 billing. Yeah. 